In this video we're going to talk about electronic speed controllers or ESCs. This is a subject that I've been asked to do a video about from a couple of subscribers so this is a subscriber request. So if you have asked for this, this is for you. ESCs are one of those topics that can appear very complicated but they actually do a little basic job in the models that we have. The two basic jobs that they're doing is running a motor, but also, in a lot of cases, supplying the plus 5 volts that the flight controllers, servos and other electronics in the craft need to operate. In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of things and cover the main questions that I'm getting asked about and why we're doing the video. First of all, we're going to talk about how they actually work, why there are three wires come out of them, because normally you'd expect a black wire and a red wire. We'll talk about how they sense, how they control everything. We'll talk about the standard bits and pieces that they have uh, for setup, things like brake, throttle, response and timing that you may hear about as well. Then we'll talk about the firmware version. There's a lot of discussion about firmware and, and recently with the introduction of multi-rotors we have lots of additional choices. So there are specialised speed controllers now to run our motors that are built and programmed just to work with multi-rotors really well. And you'll hear about things like Simon K or BL Heli firmware and we'll talk about what that is and why it's different. Then we'll do a little bit on throttle calibration about why that's important and what it actually does on the speed controller and then finally we'll cover a bit about BECs as part of the ESCs. So the electronic speed controller is the bit that runs the motor, the BEC or the battery eliminator circuit is the part of the speed controller that provides that 5 volts that we talked about. But there are lots of different options and some speed controllers don't have that in it at all. So we'll cover this at a reasonably high level, but hopefully for those of you that are a little confused, it will give you enough context to go and do your own research and read manuals and understand what it's actually telling you. So the first thing we'll talk about then is how they actually work. So a brushless motor is actually a three phase motor. So each of the wires actually connect to one of the three wires on the electronic speed controller. So if we put a diagram up here, here we have our little three wires on the right hand side. These are our motor connections and we can connect them to any one of the three wires coming out of the motor. And we have to make sure that all three are connected. And we'll explain why in a second. On the other side of the speed controller, then we have our classic black and red wires. Those would normally connect to the flight battery or to a power distribution board if it's a multi-copter. And then we have another cable that comes out the side that's actually supplying the plus 5 volts to the rest of the craft but also has a signal wire on it and the level on that signal wire is telling the ESC how much power to allow through to the motor. So let's talk about that three phase thing and three wires because that's a little confusing. So here's a diagram of our motor. So the middle's going to turn around and we can see that each of these wires are connecting to each side of an electromagnet. So those little grey bits in the walls at the 9 o'clock, 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock position are actually magnets. So if we then apply power to the red wire and the yellow wire, then it actually pushes electricity through the electromagnet at the 2 o'clock position and that then becomes energised and pulls the rotor, the rotating bit of the motor, towards it. Then the black wire and the yellow wire are powered up next and that then powers up the electromagnet at the bottom of the motor so that pulls the rotor down to that position. Then the black wire and the red wire are fired next and that then pulls the rotor round to that position and so on. And what happens is the speed controller is actually firing these pairs of wires one after the other faster and faster faster and faster and that pulls the rotor around and that's what the speed controller is doing. Not only is the speed controller doing that, it's actually also listening to the feedback that it gets because as the permanent magnets that are part of the rotor are pulled around and past the electromagnets, they also send back a little minute pulse back to the speed controller which the speed controller then uses to sense where the rotor is so it knows where to fire the next electromagnet. 
So there's a lot of really clever stuff going on inside the computer code running on the speed controller. And what it's doing is sensing the rotor and firing each of those electromagnets in turn and pulling it round. In reality, the inside of a motor, if you've ever seen the inside one, is far more complicated than that, with a lot more pulls all being aligned at different amounts. So the inside of a motor isn't this simple, but hopefully that explains how it's actually working. That's why you need the three wires. That's also why if you swap any two of those three wires around, it actually reverses the direction of the motor. Now, as we'll look at in a second, some of the more traditional speed controllers allow you to set the forward or reverse direction. So you can tell it which of the phases you want to swap around in software. But if you're playing with something like a Simon K or a BL Heli or even a traditional firmware ESC and the motor's going the wrong way, the fastest and easiest way to do it is just swap any two of those three wires and it'll reverse the rotation of the motor. Now you'll see some words banded around when we're talking about traditional ESCs. And traditional settings include things like brake. So when ESCs were originally brought to market, multi-rotors were a twinkle in the inventor's eyes. So we were using them on helicopters and planes. Also things like gliders. And sometimes when you cut the throttle, you wanted the propeller to stop rotating really quickly. You wouldn't want that on something like a helicopter because you want the blades to continue turning, but on something like a glider where maybe the propellers fold in flat against the body for aerodynamics, then absolutely, as soon as you cut the throttle, you'd want the engine to stop dead and those propellers to fold in. So a brake used to be something that you had to disable for things like multi-rotors. Then you had something called soft start. Soft start is the ability to spin up the motor slowly. So if you are a little bit aggressive on the throttle, rather than the speed controller just pile all the energy into the motor and strip the cogs and gears that you had in your model, it would slowly spin up the motor. And once it was up to speed, then it would have a much faster throttle response. That was very useful in things like remote control helicopters, and still is, because that way you can put the throttle to the level just below where you're going to take off, and the speed controller does the rest for you. And my earliest helicopters, they didn't have things like soft start, and if you were a little bit aggressive on the throttle, you'd strip the cogs. Things like motor direction. In the software, you could actually set up things like reverse and forward, as we've talked about. And that could either be done with something like a programming card, or you could actually use it through actual throttle position and sticks on the transmitter to go into a programming mode. There were things like a low voltage alarm, where if the voltage that it saw dropped below a certain level, it actually started to reduce power to the motor. Again, very handy if you're in something like a plane, less handy if you're in something like a helicopter, and something you absolutely don't want if you're in a multi-rotor. Then we've got things like response time. So that was how quickly it would change the motor speed. So if you said one second the motor needed to be at 60% throttle and the next instant it was 80% throttle, then how quickly does it take the motor from 60 to 80%? Because what you're dealing with here is a physical system and it takes a certain amount of time to increase the speed of all of that mass of the motor and the attached propeller. And then finally you had something called advance and that is how far forward in advance of the rotor coming round you'd actually fire the next set of electromagnets and that depended on how fast the motor was turning, on how much power you wanted and your individual setup. Getting advance wrong would sometimes cause horrible noises and occasionally cause excess heat in the motor. So that's the kind of stuff that you'll occasionally read in the traditional settings. So if we talk about the firmware option, there were three that you can commonly come across now when you're looking at speed controllers. And uh, each of these are pretty interchangeable, but you have to program and change them. So a lot of speed controllers these days, you can actually program them and put different firmwares on them. It tends to be that you tend to be able to go from traditional to Simon K and then Simon K to BL Heli and BL Heli to Simon K, but it's tricky to get back to the traditional code. A lot of the vendors don't tend to post that. I'm not going to talk about exactly how you do that here. I'm going to link in the description to my video showing how I program a speed controller with Simon K. You typically need a special cable 
and some software. But if you buy a Simon K or BL Heli speed controller that has something on it called a bootloader, then by using a simple USB cable and a program, you can then change the, both the version of either Simon K or BL Heli, or actually change between Simon K and BL Heli. So it gets a lot easier. So I'll link to that video in the description if you want to have a look at that, but we'll go through each of these firmware options in turn, and hopefully it'll start to make a little bit more sense. So traditional we've talked about already, so it's really one that came from plane and helicopter use. It's set up via the remote control itself or via a programming card. Simon K, one of the first variants of firmware to be specifically written for multi-rotors. And it sets all of those settings that we've looked at in the traditional ESC up for a multi-copter. In addition to that, it also increases the response time. So when the flight controller wants the change in speed to be pretty instant, the Simon K speed controller will do its best to get it there as fast as it possibly can. Really, really great for multi-rotors, and a lot of my models here run on Simon K firmware. And that's actually the version of the software that's flashed onto my speed controllers in the video that I've talked about. The third one then is BL Heli, and this is a little bit newer, but it's starting to appear in lots of different places. And there's two very distinct camps. Some love Simon K, some love BL Heli, and I think they're both really good. The advantage of BL Heli over Simon K is that not only does it give you all of the benefits of Simon K in terms of the faster throttle response, being set up for a multi-rotor really well, but it also then allows you via the BL suite of software to go and connect it to your PC via a USB cable and to change the settings and set it up how you want it to be. So whereas Simon K, your only option really is to flash the software and you have versions and different versions have slightly different characteristics. With BL Heli, if you want to change something on it, you can absolutely connect to it. And just like a traditional firmware, you can change it to be the way you need. There are instances I've read where BL Heli is a little bit better with some of the larger low speed motors. So if you're using really big props and really low KV motors, then BL Heli can sometimes be a better option for you. But as we've talked about, if you have a Simon K or a BL Heli speed controller that already has a bootloader on it, then if you can get hold of one of the USB cables, then you can actually start changing and swapping things around. My personal advice would be, I would actually get one or the other. Both in the majority of instances will work really well. Buy ESCs that already come pre-flashed with either Simon K or BL Heli if you're going to use it for a multi-rotor. Make sure it has a bootloader installed. And when you order your speed controllers, I'd always recommend ordering a separate one anyway for spares and order whatever associated USB cable comes with it for programming. And then if you find there's a problem, you can change your mind. Last thing we'll talk about then is the one-shot. You'll have heard about this and read it in places about one-shot ESCs. Now, one-shot is a relatively new thing. So if you're watching this in 2017, um, it probably doesn't feel very new, but right now it kind of is. One-shot is a new synchronous way that you can get the updates from the flight controller for how fast the motor needs to run. By default, it's a one megahertz signal coming from the flight controller using pulse width modulation and actually changing the speed of the motor. The way one shot works is increases that update speed to eight megahertz and uses a synchronous connection so that as soon as the flight controller needs a change in the speed of the motor, then that is sent once, which is why I think it's called one shot, up to the speed controller to change that speed. So it's an awful lot faster and it's a lot more instant. You have to, of course, not only have one-shot ESCs, you also need to have flight controllers that also understand one-shot as well. So let's quickly talk about throttle calibration. Throttle calibration is the process that you use to make sure that the throttle range on the speed controller, it matches the throttle range on either your radio or your flight controller. When you come into the hobby, it's a bit confusing to think that there's no standards for what the throttle range is, but in reality, everyone has their own slightly different version, and different radios output different throttle ranges, different flight controllers can be set up to have different throttle ranges, 
So you have to tune and set up the ESC so it understands where high and where low throttle is. You can also find that ESCs from the same manufacturer might have slightly different settings. So if you have a quadcopter, you might find that when you arm the quadcopter and increase the throttle, three of the motors will start and one of them will be lazy until you get to about 10% throttle and that will start running. That's because you haven't done ESC calibration. So what ESC calibration does is teaches the ESC where the high and low point is and you would always do that as part of your setup. Some of the firmwares like the Simon K firmwares have predefined high and low points and that's one of the values of having a multi-copter specific firmware but I would always recommend it's worthwhile going through it anyway. If you want to know more about ESC calibration I'll put a link in the description to one of my videos where I actually show the process which is a guaranteed way to make sure it works every time. So the last thing we'll talk about then are battery eliminator circuits, BECs. So a lot of ESCs will come with a battery eliminator circuit on them and the battery eliminator circuit or BEC's job is to provide the plus five volts that run your flight controller, the servos and everything else on the model. So let's go through each of these in turn and the first one we'll talk about is linear. Linear is a really simple circuit it reduces the voltage by getting rid of the excess voltage as heat, so it tends to get quite warm. Because of its inefficiency, it only really supports up to kind of 4S LiPo batteries, and they tend to be lower current capacity as well. The nice thing with linear BECs is that you can plug multiple ones into a flight controller side by side, and you don't need to worry about it. Switched BECs are a lot cleverer. They are a little circuit that breaks up the voltage into little pulses and then smooths that into the plus five volts that you need. Much, much more efficient, isn't wasting any power as heat, also tends to support much larger batteries like five, six, seven, eight, nine S. The thing you have to be careful of with the switched BEC is that you should only really install one at once because it has some advanced electronics that's actually sensing the output voltage and trying to accommodate the output voltage and maybe have a little bit more power, a little bit less as it sees the plus five volts go up or down. If you have two or three connected together, they can fight each other. So with these, if you're going to have four electronic speed controllers in a quadcopter and they have switched BECs, then you need to pop off three of the four red wires on the way in and just use one BEC from one of the ESCs to power everything if you've got switched. Optio. Optio is an interesting one. It doesn't actually provide the plus five volts to the flight controllers and everything else. It provides optical isolation between the power system and the signaling system, which is a good idea. Thing you have to be careful of here, if you're getting Optio speed controllers, you need another battery eliminator circuit, a separate little one that you buy, and you power the model from that. The thing you have to be careful with Optio is that a lot of them will only power on and run if they see that plus five volts on the output rail. And the last one is some of the really large high power speed controllers for the big motors don't have any on at all. They're not interested in providing the plus five volts that you need for your model. So you have to completely sort that out yourself. So it's kind of like Optio in that respect. So very quickly, if it's linear, you plug everything in, dead easy, dead simple, can get a bit warm. So just don't use them on more than 4S. Switched, more efficient, don't only plug one red wire in at once. Optio, don't pl provide plus five volts at all. So use something else to provide the power and non well, you know what, you're going to have to sort that out yourself. So we've been going for a little while now. We're coming up on the 20 minute mark. Hopefully that explains some of the concepts and how ESCs worked. We've talked about how the three phase motor works, the power, how they sense some of the standard settings on traditional firmware. Then we've looked at firmware itself, how we kind of program them. We've talked about three of the most common ones that you come across. We've talked about B. ECs and ESCs, and we've also talked about throttle programming. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel, and they're carefully ordered into playlists, so you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, Subscribe and happy flying.